Hello, Rita McInerney here again. And this week I wanted to talk about retail and specifically the challenges it faces during COVID-19. The retail sector has seen much change over the last 20 years. Um, when we look at things like the rise of the shopping centre and the out of town mall and the hollowing out of town centres as stores look for bigger and bigger premises, particularly with an influx of multinationals and bigger stores. And of course, this is good in terms of the consumer, in terms of competition, in terms of pushing retailers to be the best they can be. But also it is very challenging, particularly for smaller retailers. And we look at the push to go more online and online selling and the uh, competition that that creates, particularly again for, for local retail. However, why is retail important? Why is local retail important? It's important because it keeps town centres alive. It keeps that sense of place and community within a town, that vibrancy. And uh, retail goes hand in hand with hospitality in town centres. People come into town, they shop, they go for something to eat, they go for a cup of coffee. There's that sense of meeting place. Uh, they, they engage with family, with friends. And it's very important from a social aspect. And obviously a lot of that has been challenged during COVID-19 anyway. So now we're looking at a situation where, where retailers, particularly small retailers, and these are the people, I suppose, that are very embedded in their community. They're the ones that are the first to support any local charity or organisations. They're the first to give a young person a job for the summer or weekends. And, and that's hugely important. They, they spend, they keep the, all their money local. They, they invest locally. They reinvest in their business. They support, they, shop, they, they obviously employ locally. They shop locally themselves in terms of they see the, the benefit and they understand it. So therefore, they're more likely to uh, spread it around in terms of engaging with other businesses. So they're very embedded and very invested in the community. They've a real interest and uh, attachment to keeping a place looking well and feeling well and being very inviting. So they're very invested in, in the place that they are located. And uh, ob obviously a lot of them get involved locally. And during COVID-19, the social aspect obviously of retail has been challenged. And we're now in a situation where we're in level five lockdown and we're looking at why we need to get more people to stay at home, but we need to uh, also ensure that the businesses will be there into the future when lockdown is lifted and there gradually. Um, and I suppose just in relation to some of the local restrictions that have been put on people, um, yes, it's very important to, to stay at home unless you have a specific reason to go out. But what I'm concerned about is in relation to um, the reasons and the uh, implications that have been put on particularly small retailers. So when those non-essential businesses have closed, and that was very acceptable because we had to keep people at home, a lot of businesses started to click and collect. And this specifically, when we look at rural Ireland and we look at the businesses in our towns and villages, this operated very well because people knew their retailers quite well. They were able to organize to, to purchase either over the phone or on a click and collect service on their, on their website and uh, ensure that that service was delivered to the customer by arranging a click and collect. And it's not just as and now that they're looking at banning click and collect. However, it's not just as simple as everything goes online from a delivery service point of view, because it is very it takes time and money and expertise to invest in a website to organize the the delivery aspect of your uh, service to your customer. And obviously, delivery is under huge pressure at the moment. Um, in relation to the demand. So while it is 
a hugely beneficial service it is very expensive and obviously again if you're looking at smaller businesses they don't have the same resources that big multinationals have or big companies or retailers have so we have to support our retailers at a local level if we're to keep that community and those towns and villages alive after COVID. And I suppose what concerned me a lot was that it seemed to be retail seemed to be disproportionately, um, uh, you know, focused on in terms of, I didn't see the evidence that this is causing people to um, congregate. And I think we should be a little bit more nuanced. And I think it's a problem with Irish politics in general is we're very crude at the politics. It's a very reactionary um, process rather than sitting down with those that are in the know. And I know this takes time, but it, it is worth, even if it's focused and short, to come up with solutions and to come up with answers because you know, they're the people that know the industry. They obviously want to protect themselves, their staff, their customer, their community. Because of all I've just said in terms of how invested local retailers are in their community, they are the last people that want to be the cause of any sort of outbreak when it comes to COVID, naturally. So they will be able to tell the powers that be in government and uh, what they can do in order to ensure people's safety. Um, and as we've seen, it is more about households and groupings gathering rather than a simple interaction with with a retailer um, that is causing the numbers to rise. So if you look what they've done in the UK, in particularly in, sorry, in Scotland, what they've done there is they have curbed click and collect to focus on key retail. So your uh, clothing, footwear, baby equipment, electrical, um, key cutting, um, services like that that are essential. And they have been very strict with saying this is a click and collect. There is no going into the store to collect it. They have to, it has to, the business has to organize themselves in such a way that the, um, uh, person, the customer can collect it at the door. And again, obviously that involves investment by the uh, retailer. They have to invest, particularly at this time of year when the weather is so inclement, to invest in some safe and comfortable way that someone can, can collect, whether it's a hatch or a half door or a canopy or whatever, that they can collect the goods at the door without actually entering the premises and that the retailers would follow all the necessary guidelines in that regard. Similarly, and this is where there's, a, I think, in Scotland, a little bit more um, uh, fairness. They have also restricted um, the um, takeaways from a food perspective to not let people into their premises. So it, it seems to be more fairly um, across the board these regulations are coming in in the uh, in Scotland because it's saying that you cannot enter again, you can't enter a food premises to collect because what I couldn't understand when we were talking about banning collect and collect in Ireland. But I was saying, but you can go to a takeaway and stand in a takeaway for 15 minutes and collect your food. So how is that any different from collecting a product from a shop? So therefore, what they've done in, the, in Scotland is again, the, the, the takeaways you have to invest in, in, the, in the money and all of that in, in the premises, but they are doing the same thing, treating them exactly the same. It's a click and collect service tech, effectively or a phone and collect. So you are ringing in your order for your food and you're collecting it at the door. So they're introducing the same regulations in, for the retail as they are for the takeaway. So it's you you go, you order your food and, and you get it at the door, which is the same as the retail. And then they're confining it to um, specific retail, as I said, that are seen, deemed as essential, like footwear and baby equipment and electrical and key cutting, essential things like that, that homewares, 
uh, garden centres, things like that, that people need. So th it, it's more about the actual contact and trying to minimise the contact. And retailers are well aware of how to follow the guidelines and follow the procedures and keep their product and their customers as sanitised and as safe and their staff as, as possible in order to not contribute to the rising numbers in COVID-19, which is the last thing they want to do. But we have to be mindful of how difficult and expensive and time consuming and, and a whole range of expertise. Because if you're a retailer, you probably are doing everything in your business. So you don't necessarily have that expertise when it comes to IT. And IT, okay, a certain amount of it can be done over the phone, but like when you're in a situation where you can't have a technician or a person, an expert in, in the area of websites to advise you there and then uh, in your office to, as to how to operate this web new website that you're building for your business, it's a very difficult thing to just create a website overnight, organize the logistics of, you know, working with it, with a with delivery service. And we have seen great um, uh, inroads in that area, particularly in the last nine months in relation to developing websites for small businesses. And there's been funding available from Enterprise Ireland and the county enterprise boards through the local enterprise office. And that has been amazing. So, you know, there's inroads in that, but it's a long process. And when you factor in now that suddenly these retailers are supposed to not use a click and collect service and organize the delivery of it, that's another layer. It's another um, thing that they have to to work through. And you have to realize that these we want these businesses to be there when COVID has been dealt with, when the vaccine has been rolled out, when it is safe for everyone to, to return to our towns and villages down to and cities into the centers. But this is effectively affecting rural Ireland much more because a lot of the smaller businesses operating in rural Ireland would not be able to just overnight have a website that is now, uh, if they got to the stage where it's click and collect, fine, they've got that far, but now there's the extra uh, element of organizing logistics and delivery. So disproportionately, it is smaller businesses that operate, a lot of them operate in rural areas, um, that are being affected by this regulation in relation to click and collect. So I just think we need to be a little bit more careful about how we uh, introduce these uh, regulations with the best of intentions, but we need to be talking to the representative bodies of these organisations, of the retailers, and getting the insights and this is what government need to be doing. We cannot just blanket introduce um regulations without the consideration of those that will affect and and they want the best for themselves and their customers um and their staff so therefore by engaging with them they're going to give solutions and ideas so if you give them you know obviously the the ultimate goal is to reduce contact so that we're reducing the numbers of COVID and reducing the spread of COVID-19 in the country. So therefore you look at the, the issue and you come up with solutions as to how you can safely and effectively do that to meet uh, the needs of the businesses and also the customer and also public health. And if it's not possible to work out a solution where both sides are happy with that compromise because politics is the art of compromise, well, then that's fine. Public safety comes first. The health of the nation comes first. But at least give them the opportunity to come forward with ideas and introduce ideas, because I do believe we have to stop doing this crude politics in a lot of our legislation where it's just it's a one size fits all solution. That's what it is, that you just want to introduce legislation that will that is the that is the lowest common denominator that will you know go across the board and we need to be nuanced the country and the people they deserve better they we as legislators we need people who are going to make the hard decisions and i will talk about this a lot because this is something that really infuriates me when it comes to 
how we deal with, with, with public legislation and introduce laws and legislation. We have to, as a country, uh, to mature as a society, we have to make hard decisions. We have to debate it out and ensure the best solutions are there for the people. And, and I will refer to that all the time. So that is my take on retail as it currently is during level five of COVID-19 um, when you look at the non-essential retail. So um, that are, they're my thoughts for this week. And next week, I will again talk about another issue in relation to rural Ireland and local issues. Thank you.